the reason why he was shouting at us, um, he was still quite far away, but we were all like pooing ourselves. We were like, oh my goodness, we're we're gonna get like axed or something. This is the start of a horror film. Like this is. Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. Today I'm going to be talking all about a night hike that I went on. So much happened, we got shouted at, we got lost, there was screaming, so (laughs) that's what we're going to be talking about. Also, me and my friend have a new obsession, so I'm going to be talking about that as well. But anyway, before we start, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, but they also ship all over the world. And something that I don't think I've talked about much on the podcast, about Red Post is go and follow their Instagram because I'm pretty sure every Wednesday or most Wednesdays they do something called Win It Wednesday. So if you're like me, you love a good giveaway, check check out what their Win It Wednesday is this week or next week because you never know, you could win a very cool prize. Anyway, thank you again to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast and let's get into it. So yes, I went on a night hike the other day, which when you think about it, Probably, do, you know, doing it in February, probably, well, in the UK or the Northern Hemisphere anyway, it's probably not the best time of year because when we were doing it, um, the week before, actually, me and my dad, we were chatting about how good the fields were. Like for February, they were actually dry. We were thinking, you know what, how dry they are right now. You could probably roll them. We knew that, you know what, more rain's going to come. There's no point rolling them yet unless, you know, we didn't put the horses in those fields or those paddocks and just left it until the summer. But anyway, so we were talking about that. And then, of course, I feel like we jinxed it because we have had so much rain lately. I feel like I'm such a like a proper British person just going on about the weather all the time. Um, But anyway, the night hike, it was wet. It was rainy and it was also dark. (laughs) One of my favourite quotes that one of my friends said was, you know what, this night hike would be a bit easier if it was during the daytime. And we were like, mate, it wouldn't be a night hike then, it would be a day hike or just a hike. So um, it was a charity night hike. Um, The way it kind of worked, um, if, I don't know, I feel like all night hikes are slightly different, but Anyway, me and my friends all did it. And, um, you know, this wasn't just a, you know, here we go. We're going for a walk. Follow the signs. Oh, no, it is not that easy. We were given a compass, an ordinate survey map, which is basically a map um, that has like plots on either side. Uh, We were given coordinates as well. So we had to make sure that we were going the right way by plotting the coordinates onto the map. And it's not like we could just do that right at the beginning because we had to go to different checkpoints. I think there are about six different checkpoints. And at each checkpoint, um, we had to, we were given new coordinates that we had to then plot in on the map in the dark. We obviously had torches, luckily. Um, What other things did we have? We were all given an Apple AirTag to walk around with us so they could see where we were going, make sure that we weren't, you know, completely going off in the wrong direction. Um, But also, you know, if there was an emergency, they could easily find us. Uh, What other things were we given? I think that was it, really. So, um, off we went. We were actually the first team to go. So we were a girls team. So it was me and three other of my girlfriends. Um, and then my boyfriend also did the night hike. But he was like, as you can come. Well, actually, he didn't even say I could come along. He knew from the start that I would not want to come along with him because him and two other boys are very, very competitive. They wanted to win this thing. So instead of a night hike, they did a night run. They ran the whole thing. Now this isn't, this this was a difficult night hike. Like it wasn't some like short little, you know, 45 minute walk. This was in the rain, in the mud. So it felt like I was walking through like a water treadmill because it was so wet and squelchy. Um, it was in the dark. And it also took, well, it took my team about three hours. Bearing in mind, we set off at around eight o'clock. So by the time we got back, it was, it was just before midnight. So it was, it was a long old trek. It was past my bedtime. I'm one of those people. I like to get into bed 
in my pyjamas at about eight o'clock, have an hour of chilling in bed if that's watching telly, reading my book, and then be asleep by nine. That sounds like a great evening. Sometimes at a push, I'll go for 9.30. But if it's past like 10 o'clock, that is way past my bedtime. You know, I'm, my sleep schedule's going out of, out of clock. I mean, I, I am an early riser sometimes, most of the time. <laughs> Um, but yes, I am just one of those people that need a lot of sleep. You know what? That's just how I am. So to be fair, I'm pretty sure women need a lot more sleep than men. So maybe that's my excuse as I'm a girl. But, um, anyway, not back to the night hike. So (laughs) my boyfriend's team, they were obviously won. They, he was like, if I don't win, I'm going to be so disappointed in myself. He's very competitive. Um, they were half an hour quicker than the team that came second. So that is how quick they were. I think he did twist his ankle or hurt his ankle because he's been hobbling along the last week. So um, he did hurt himself. I did say to him, look, if you run, you're gonna be, we're gonna be like tortoise in the hair. Look, we're gonna, my team's strategy, take it nice and slow. Make sure we don't plot any of the coordinates wrong because if you get lost, that's probably not very good. And that's gonna just take you longer. And also, I thought, you know what, we're going to have some fun. We're going to walk at speed where we can chat along, you know, catch up with my friends. Nice old time. To be fair, I'd do it again. Maybe if it wasn't so long. But I I didn't mind when it rained a little bit. And it wasn't even that cold. I got quite warm. I had one of my, like, really long Lemure coats on. um, And most of the time, I unzipped the top and then used the arms and kind of like tied a knot. So it looked like I was walking along with this weird like skirt thing on because it was a really long coat. So my top half was nice and warm and then my bottom half was nice and, well, also nice and warm. But uh, but anyway, um, so that was my, that was my go-to look. I always had ear warmers on because I'm one of those people, whatever the weather, if it's like a little bit cold outside, my ears are very sensitive. I do have very little ears. Um, That's one thing like random people will just like say to me. Like I remember at school, somebody will just like look at my ear and they'll be like, goodness Esme, you have very small ears. Like I feel like my ears are just the same size as they were when I was a baby and I just grew and my ears didn't. So um, anyway, that's a little random fact. I've got, if you're watching on, on YouTube, you can't see my ears because I do have my hair down. So there we go. Um, anyway, back to the, back to the night hike. So yeah, we were like slow and steady, making sure that we didn't get lost. We might've got lost. Um, we also like my boyfriend's team. I was like, you are going to trip in like a rabbit hole or a badger hole or some sort of hole, or you're going to hurt yourself in the mud and twist your ankle and hurt yourself. What did he do? He went and hurt himself, but he said it was worth it to win. So there we go. <laughs> Anyway, um, so now on to the things in the night hike that didn't go so well. So before, basically, I think it was around the time we got to the first checkpoint because my team was the first to leave. We were not the first to get back. Little spoiler alert there. So just before the first checkoff point, my boyfriend's team overtook us, ran on by. We were also walking through on this road, which t- kind of turned into a mini stream because there was so much water. So they just splashed us as they ran, ran by and were like, thanks a lot. Anyway, got to the checkpoint. And the thing was, actually, in our defence, some of the reasons why our time was a little bit longer was because we kept catching up with other teams and um we got held at our checkpoints because they kind of wanted us we kind of went out at five ten minute intervals because if you're too close then you're just going to follow the team ahead aren't you you're not going to be doing the coordinates and everything properly um so I used my a level geography coordinate skills to be fair i think i learned that in gcse geography or even doing dv i was like have any of you guys done dv and none of them had so i was like all right i'll be the map reader so i was kind of like the map reader um one of my friends was the gate person. <laughs> we kind of like all had like different roles. One of my friends was like the motivator. And another one of my friends was the like carrying everything. So like all of the- we had a first aid kit with us. Um, she was also wearing like the high vis to make sure that when we were on roads for a little bit, we weren't run over. Um, also, I don't know, I, I haven't even said this yet, but a lot. Um, you might be thinking, Esme, where were you walking then if you were doing a night hike? So we were actually walking on farmer's fields, but across footpaths. So um, I don't really know if footpaths are really a thing in different countries, but I'll explain it because I remember explaining footpaths to a friend of mine that doesn't live in the UK and they were like, what on earth? That is so weird. But basically, back in the day, 
before there were like cars and things there were set aside paths on people's land so you could like get places because there weren't really as many many roads or things like that there's actually a really cool footpath that goes from my village to another like the next nearby village and um it kind of goes through this wooded bit and that's basically where they would herd like pigs and sheep and things from one farm to another or one village to another especially if they were like taking them to market and stuff like that which is quite cool so there's a lot of history behind footpaths so it's basically a path that anyone can walk across across someone's land so um but sometimes with footpaths the footpath isn't very well how do I put this signposted you kind of know where you're going because there are little signposts um where we are there's like a little yellow or little blue arrow that says like footpath or I think footpaths are yellow bridle paths are blue where I am I'm pretty sure it might be different in different counties um but anyway so we're following them but sometimes you'll be walking along a little bit especially if it's like along a hedge line or um sometimes a footpath that it would just be like across the middle of a field which seems very weird and when you're walking along like it can be like if you don't know don't think you're going quite the wrong way it does feel like you're trespassing sometimes luckily the organizers of the night hike um it's at somebody it was started off at someone's farm and obviously they know all the farmers nearby they know everyone that lives nearby so everyone's like land slash footpaths that we were walking across they did ring them up being like hey look there's a night hike on this evening if you see loads of people walking around in the dark don't worry they're not breaking into your farm they're probably just a little bit lost or they're doing the night hike so <laughs> there we go um so there was one farm that we walked past and it it was literally it was like walking in the middle of their farm like we had to like there was like a little gate and everything we had to go through it, it felt so weird because all the footpaths where i am it's pretty much just through fields. There's one that's like through a farm, but it's like along their driveway. So it doesn't feel as weird. But this one literally like we're walking through this like middle of the stables. And I was like, goodness grief. I, I feel like someone's going to come and shout at me. Spoiler alert. Someone did come and shout at us. <laughs> so anyway, we were walking along having a merry old time. And we got to this one bit of the footpath. And we double checked it on the map and it was like, no, it definitely goes through this person's driveway. And that, to be fair, they had, um, I know when people have those big um, wooden gates and like, it's a big like, don't come in, get off our land, you're not allowed here. But there was a little gate next to it for humans to go through. And we were like, I'm, we were like triple checked the map before we went through it. And we were like, is this the right way? Anyway, we had a little look. We kind of like, especially as this was in the dark as well, all of our head torches were not that great. They had the amount of light that maybe like a candle candle lamp thing in the Victorian times. Like it was not good. But one of my friends, who is a sheep farmer, she had a proper big old torch that was very powerful so we used her torch most of the time she oh yeah her allocated job was our eyes she was making sure that we were actually we, she was like looking out for all the gates and things like when you're walking across the footpath you're like where are we going is this the right way there was actually a few times where we might have followed a sheep track or a deer track thinking it was the footpath so we probably did go a little bit off track at times because it was supposed to be eight kilometers and we ended up doing 10 kilometers so Anyway, moving on. So anyway, yeah, we were at this person's gateway slash driveway and we managed to see in the distance with my friend's big torch that there was a footpath sign. We're like, great, we're going the right way. We walked onto their land, obviously like a security light came on everything. It felt very weird. Like it literally felt like I was trespassing. Even though we weren't, it was all legal. There was a footpath. Um, and my friend, my friend Lucy said to me, I th- I think I've just like, it, I think I saw someone. I don't know if it was a person, but it, like, it might have been a ghost or something like she she obviously like I don't know I'm not really like a very believing in ghosts kind of person but she was saying to me she was like joking around like guys I've just seen a ghost I've just seen someone or something like that because she didn't actually think it was a person she just thought it was maybe a trick of the light when the security light went on anyway there was a um the, the, the signpost for the footpath you could either go straight ahead or to the left and we were like oh it must be like straight ahead walking along and then we climbed over the stile walked a little bit through this field and then we were like wait a second we're going the wrong way so luckily we hadn't actually got got that far going that way maybe not even for like five minutes walking it really wasn't that far anyway so we turned around 
went back, went along the other way that the footpath said to go, and we were like, lovely jubbly, we're on the right path, we're on the right way, back on track again. Also, that did throw some people off because it was kind of wet, it was dewy, lots of people, and also we're walking like through long grass. Lots of people actually said to us at that one signpost, at like that one person's house where it felt really weird, like you're walking on their land. Did you guys all go straight ahead as well for a little bit? Because we just followed your footprints and we didn't even think of that because obviously we were the, one of the first teams to head off. So there weren't really many footprints for us to follow. So um, anyway, we actually kind of baited people a bit there. We made we made them go the wrong way, which is quite funny. Um, anyway, we're on the right track. We were going and... Um, my friend, the one that had the really good torch was saying to me, oh my gosh, I did babysitting at this house once. I like, I know where we are. And we were like, oh, brilliant. She was like, oh yeah, the footpath goes diagonally across this field rather than across the hedge line because the gate's like in the, in the like corner. And I was like, oh great, we'll follow you then. Um, So anyway, we were walking like across this field and then this guy, this old man comes running towards us shouting at us and at first I thought he we all thought he shouted dog or something and we thought oh maybe like his dog's got out and like has seen us and wants to like come and say hi so we all kind of like just stopped and froze and then um he's and then we like obviously turned around to look at him we all had head torches on he was like put your torches down you're blinding me and we're all like ah this man's like shouting at us anyway um the reason why he was shouting at us um he was still quite far away but we were all like pooing ourselves we were like oh my goodness we're we're gonna get like axed or something this is the start of a horror film like this is at night we're four girls on our own this man is shouting at us like he was quite scary looking anyway um he was shouting at us because apparently that day he'd plant loads of saplings in that field and he didn't want us walking across it even though that was the way the footpath went because he was worried we were going to walk on these saplings and he was like saying can you walk across the like hedge line please and we're like okay yep yeah sure sorry and then we just ran away we just ran across the hedge line we're like we're gone we're going we're going so that obviously was the person slash ghost slash thing that my friend Lucy saw um so yeah and then um we were like oh my gosh he must have been standing out there and watching us the whole time when we went the wrong way and then came back again we were like oh my gosh that's so creepy um so there we go um but as soon as like the man started shouting at us my friend lucy was like we're part of the night hike you should have been informed that we're walking through we're really sorry this is what we thought was the footpath we're all just like ah um so that was the first funny thing and then we um, rang up the person that was like organizing the night hike and was like um, at this farm, we got shouted at, so maybe ring everyone up and tell them to not follow the footpath and follow the hedge line instead, because if not, they'll get shouted at, because <laughs> we were like one of the first teams to go through. Um, so anyway, that happened. That was quite funny. Um, then the next, obviously there were lots of other things. We, um, it was actually really lovely at all the checkpoints. Um, there was somebody basically waiting in a car and, um, some of them were sneaky because some of them you could see the car headlights on and we were like, great there there they are perfect some of them they had their headlights off so we were looking around like goodness grief where is this car and then we actually we accidentally walked up to this like random car parked on the side of the road it was not for the night hike it was just someone's car so if they were looking out their windows they would have thought we were being very dodgy like looking around at their car and stuff um but anyway got to the car some of them had like biscuits and chocolate that we could have as like a little break in between and we also all had to have a mandatory five minute break at each stop point but also to be fair we took that break because we were doing our coordinates we were double checking them all that kind of stuff where the next check check up point was and then we were on the homeward stretch we were on our way home it was great it was fun we might have gone off course a few times we managed to get ourselves back on track it was all good but we were all absolutely shattered well it was coming up to midnight we had this one really also this was a really hilly night hike as well we were either walking up a hill or down a hill so anyway i thought we need a bit of motivation the last time would stretch going up this hill so i thought i'd put some music on um and <laughs> i was at the back at this stage because i stopped because i'm not very good at walking while being on my phone i just know knowing me I'm quite clumsy. I'd probably trip over and fall on my face. Actually, 
nobody fell over, which is really good. I'd say that's a pro from our team, um, especially as I feel like we're a little bit on the clumsy side, especially in the mud and things. So I thought I'd stop for a little bit, let my friends walk ahead, put on a song. Um, if you want to know what song I put on, it was um, the Rihanna song "Shut Up and Drive" because I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that was on my like downloaded music on like one of my running playlists or my like upbeat playlist songs. Um, actually, it might have been on my girl boss playlist anyway so I put that on and if uh, it, after this podcast you'll have to listen to the beginning of it I'd love to play it but I really don't want to get a copyright strike um because if not the podcast will basically get blocked in loads of different countries and a lot of you won't be able to see it but anyway um so I play the beginning of that song and I didn't realize the beginning of that song sounds a little bit like chainsaws or a little bit like a like a high like a swarm of bees so anyway that song full blast was on my phone and as I turned it on I thought you know what I'll have a little jog to catch up with my friends oh my goodness also by the way I, I like before talking about my friends and things like that on the podcast I always ask for their permission and I said to my friend Lucy can I please say this in the podcast because it's too funny and she was like yeah sure so anyway there was this weird sound me running behind her she oh she was so scared she screamed she ran she was freaking out she was like oh my gosh Ez I thought that there was like a something coming to chase us that weird sound you were running behind me and anyway we found it so funny and to be fair that all gave us a bit of an adrenaline rush a little bit of something to laugh about that it powered us on for the last bit of the night hike but oh my gosh I felt I wish you guys were there because it was so funny oh like to be fair my other friends are a bit freaked out but she was proper oh it was just fair it was just funny times um so yeah even at like at the beginning of the night hike me and my boyfriend were a little bit like it's raining it's wet it's dark it's coming up to our bedtime do we really want to go on this and I was like no because there'll be funny memories it'll be fun and you'll get to like tell everyone that you've won and all that kind of stuff because you're super competitive but I actually I had a real lovely time so if you ever get the chance to do a night hike I'd recommend it was good also forget the like what's the thing that all the um LA gym girlies love it's called like I always get the numbers mixed up but it's basically that this trend in, in 2023 where if you go to the gym if you go on either the running machines but just set it so it's like really high so it's like you're walking up a hill and just like power walk that's what all the girlies do well that's what we were doing but on actual hills to be fair even though it was dark there was some nice scenery there was quite a few fallen down trees that I had to climb over um my friends also made fun of me because they just either went like round the fallen down tree when I was like no I'm gonna climb over it and made things a little bit more difficult for myself but we had some good laughs we had some good chats it was a good time but also afterwards there was complimentary hot chocolate there was hot dogs there was snacks biscuits it was great and it was nice just catching up with everyone afterwards and having a little chat anyway my team did not win we came I think fifth out of seven or eight teams (laughs) and one of the teams didn't even finish so there we go uh, but we had a good time. We were just chatting away. We were also also just saying we were held up at quite a lot of spots for longer than five minutes because we were too close to other teams. So that's all I'm saying. Um, but no, it was a very, very good time. And, you know, it gave me a bit of exercise, a bit of a chat with a friend. I feel like that's something that we all did a lot during like lockdown. You would go for like a walk with a friend. And now I feel like that's like a little bit more, more weird if you just said like, oh, hey, do you want to go for a walk sometime? But actually, I love a good walk. I love a good good little you know because you can have a little chat see some scenery catch up with a friend I love it all right before I go on to me and my friends new obsession I I never do this on the podcast so I just thought I'd ask maybe very kindly please if um you are enjoying it if you could rate it like it subscribe all the whatever podcasty things that it depends on what podcast provider you're on but um to be fair if you've listened to me waffle on for what about 20 minutes i think i've been talking so far maybe a little bit longer maybe a little bit less depends on how many cuts we need to make to be fair a lot of the time with the podcast we don't really make many cuts i just sort of waffle on and even the like bits where i make mistakes or sometimes things go a little bit wrong i do like to add them in because i feel like that's just more entertaining it's kind of fun hearing like the behind the scenes and stuff like that um anyway so yeah if you could do that that would mean a lot to me and thank you very much thank you for listening 
listening. Um, also, it's coming up to the podcast's one year anniversary, and um, I'm pretty sure we managed to record me sending uh, my friend a little voice ne- message because she's um, makes like cakes on the side. Um, she's got like a little side hustle of making cakes and stuff. She's very very talented. So I was asking her if we could make a podcast one year anniversary cake because I feel like that would be really cute I don't really have much of a like a anniversary kind of thing for my YouTube channel because I felt like I made it I posted one video and then didn't post anything for six months and then kind of made videos that I never posted because I was too shy and awkward and didn't want to post it for the world and then I just started posting for the world so there we go um especially as my phone ran out of storage and I was like you know what if I put it to YouTube then it's safe and then my friends and family can watch it and see what I'm up to with the horses so there we go um anyway um on to my new kind of obsession that me and my friend have that she's got me into so um I feel like this is something that if you have been on the internet in the last year you will know what these are especially if you're British I feel like these things are very big in the UK I feel like America the thing that everyone wants to collect nowadays is Stanley Cups here in the UK what everyone wants to collect a jelly cat teddies soft toys plushies whatever you want to call them i say like we don't really say plushies in the uk i'd say we say soft toys or teddies we'd call them teddies even if they're not a bear like it could be a teddy rabbit or um yeah i'd say like yeah cuddly toys anyway so um i feel like jelly cats they have been around for years like i know a lot of my friends they're like I feel like everyone or most people either had when they were younger like an emotional support blanket or an emotional support teddy. My teddy that I had when I was little, I think I man- there was like a trend ages ago. I think it was back in the pandemic times and where everyone was like showing what their cuddly toy looks like now compared to a stock image of what it was like when it was brand new and how like worn and old that they look now especially if you're older like me like you're in your 20s like that thing is over 20 years old so um my cuddly toy if you want to know was I still have her today her name is Rabby she is a rabbit um she's grey She has a pink kind of like collar on her with white daisies on. So there we go. I I managed to find back in the day when that was a trend, a picture of what she looked like brand new, like stock image. And I can't find the picture anymore online. So I don't know if it's gone. So that was quite sad because I tried to look it up the other day um, because I don't know if she was a jelly cat or if she, I think she was from M&S actually, maybe. I don't know when I, I... I'm trying to remember from that stock image but um with all of my cuddly toys I used to cut off the label that was like on their bum because I was like and then it doesn't look like a real rabbit if I just snip it off you know it doesn't matter so um yeah that was rabbit but anyway um the cuddly toy obsession in the UK has grown because everyone wants a jelly cat nowadays because oh a jelly cat is like a brand of cuddly toy by the way um because they are really fun you can get ones in the shape of apples you can get ones in the shape of like all different things like they've come out with a sports one as well and I really embarrassed myself in front of my friend um luckily she found it really funny but um you know the game badminton I accidentally said oh my gosh, look, they have a really cute little um, one in the shape of a, I said, cock shuttle, when it's actually called a shuttlecock. Um, I got that the wrong way around and she was wetting herself. She found it so funny. Um, um, So anyway, we we went shopping the other day, a little girly shop. We had actually a really cute day. We went and got sushi together. We went like walking around town because the weekend before I spent like the whole week away in Germany working. So I didn't really have a weekend the week before. So I thought, you know what? Last week I was like, I'll, I'll take the Friday afternoon off. Me and my friend will go shopping together that Friday because sometimes on the weekends, like shops, it's just a little bit busy, especially if you go shopping on a Sunday as well. I always feel bad for all the people working on like a Sunday, um, especially as like the shops also close a little bit earlier. Definitely in the UK, like some shops, they're only open for like a few hours if they are open on a Sunday. So I was like, Friday afternoon, perfect. We'll have a little girly little shopping trip. That'll be really fun. Um, so anyway, we went in, <laughs> we literally probably look like such children. We went into a toy shop to look at the jelly cat. So a little look through there and then we're like we'll have a think we'll come back um and then we found this another shop uh phone up on set please 
<laughs> I'll keep that in just because it's funny. Um, but anyway, we then went to found this other shop on the way back from getting our sushi. And we were like, oh my goodness, they had even more than the toy shop. And we- it was like one of those cute little shops where I'd call them like a gift shop. It was a little independent shop as well. So we were like, we'll support the independent shop, not this like random chain toy shop. And they do like everything. Like they do like little um, earrings. They do... I don't know, just things that you would get as gifts. So like the kind of normal stuff like water bottles. They probably had um, those, not bean bags, but little bags full of lavender that you can put in like your sock drawer to smell nice. Scented candles, re-diffusers, cushions, blankets, you know, that kind of shop. Um, So we went in there and they had, when I tell you, a whole wall of jelly cats. They had all the different types. They had all the different animals, everything. We were looking around and we we're like, okay, we'll get one because um, I've got I've got a car. Well, I, I mean, I've got, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that did not sound, that was not how it went to come out. Um, I have a new car and she has a jelly cat in her car. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should get a jelly cat to go in my car. So then when I'm driving around, keep me company. So also keep my car company. My, my car has got a name. Yes, I am that person. I don't know why I just like to name my cars. My cars so far have been called Frida, Ivy, and then my new one is called Digby. I feel like with car names, you can't just call it like a normal name, like Harry. That's, you know, I know too many Harrys. I know a lot of Harrys. Why don't you call your car name a name that everybody kind of like knows, like it's a human name or an animal name, but you don't really know anyone called that. Like, I don't know anyone called Frida. I don't know anyone called Ivy. And I don't know anyone called Digby. I definitely don't know anyone called Digby. I feel like that's a really strange name, but I feel like cars, you've got to, if your name is Digby, I'm really sorry. Actually, to be fair, Ivy is a very pretty name. Um, I do quite like that. I like plant names. Like, I love Willow's name. Part of me, like, thinks maybe, like, if I had a little girl one day, calling her Willow would be so cute. Or maybe, like, a middle name. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Um, But, yeah, Frida, I thought, was kind of fun. A little bit different. I feel like in the UK, we we don't... Frida's not a very common name. Um, So, yeah, like, I guess, like, names from different countries, that could be quite a cool name for a car. But, anyway, I don't know any Digby's. Actually, I think there was a sausage dog online called Digby, or someone had a sausage dog called Digby, and I just thought, that is a cool ass cute name for a little sausage dog so my new car is called Digby that is his name and uh my friend was like oh yeah we should get a little jet like just like like, just a little one because they are I can't lie they are quite expensive especially the big ones oh my goodness I'm I'm trying to save money (laughs) at the moment so anyway um we're looking around looking at all of them and um the one that I really I really liked the white dragon I thought that was really cool and really cute because I don't know why it just made me think of Mickey um my friend really liked the pig one um there was like a little dog one as well that was cute and we're like looking through them all, all the foods there was one of like a porridge bowl with little blueberries on that was also very cute anyway just as we're about to leave just as we're about to buy like she was about to buy her jelly cat she was like oh my gosh Ez look what I have found they had a little dinosaur one which is like a new one I think it's called a bronchosaurus a bronchiosaurus um it was like a little green dinosaur the one without the spikes the spikes is a stegosaurus I'm pretty sure so anyway we were like oh my gosh that is adorable but they only had one so we went up we asked do you have a second one of these? Because we were like, we we should get matching ones. And I was like, no, 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 you spotted it. If you want it, you have it. I, I won't get it. You get that one. You spotted it. And she was like, okay. But if there's a second one, we, you, we'll, you'll get a matching one, won't you? And I was like, okay, go on then. Um, so anyway, they came down and they had six round the back. So I got to pick which one I thought was the cutest. So I picked the like fluffiest one. Um, so we da- now have matching dinosaurs my dinosaur is called delilah so delilah um and digby are now friends and i feel like this is the most sad thing but we were in the shop and there were other (laughs) women in like their 20s 30s actually i think this lady was in her 30s that we ended up talking to because i was like oh they're gonna look so cute in our car and she was like i have a collection of jelly cats in my car as well and then the lady that was serving us at the till she was also like in her 20s and she was like I have a jelly cat in my car as well. And she was like, I'm saving, I'm like, I'm going to buy the coffee bean at the end of my shift. And we were like, oh my gosh. Anyway, it was fun. It was a fun, like girly, girly day. Um, So yeah, I thought I would tell you about my little dinosaur that actually fits perfectly. The way like my car is, there's like a, 
I don't want I don't want to call it like a glove box, but there's like a, a little gap above the glove box. So that's where my dinosaur chill. So it's not like on the dash or anything. That was one thing that I was worried about. I was like, I don't want it to go anywhere where it's going to obstruct my view or like the police are going to tell me off or anything like that. So anyway, um, that was my, that is my new obsession, little jelly cats, because they are very cute, but they are expensive. But anyway, um, that, 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 I just thought I'd tell you that because it was a funny story. It was just like how everyone, literally everyone in the shop was all like, oh, my gosh I've got one of my car too so there we go anyway I think we're going to finish off today's podcast episode here I hope you enjoyed it please if you do go on a night hike make sure that you try and go the right way like we did and yeah enjoy hope you all have a lovely week or a lovely weekend and I will see you all next time thanks for listening bye thanks for a post for sponsoring bye So I was wondering if um, This Esme Limited could commission you to make a cake for the one year anniversary of the podcast, please. Um, I don't really know what to involve. Um, The kind of colours for the podcast is like a sage green and a baby pink. So maybe like something with headphones or a mic or it's called Esme's Country Life. So maybe something like country as well could be cute. Um, But yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that. The anniversary for the podcast for one year is the 16th of March so um, it's a little little while away it's like a month away but yeah let me know if you'd be interested in that because I thought that could be fun